Joyce DeWitt is often renowned for her outstanding performance in the hit sitcom Three's Company, where she portrayed Janet Wood, an ordinary and down-to-earth flatmate. But before she developed into the Janet Wood we are all familiar with today, something incredibly traumatic occurred in her life that nearly cost her everything. You're probably thinking, what exactly could have happened for such a huge transition to take place in her life? Well, watch right to the end and we'll take you through the untold stories of Joyce DeWitt and present you with some of her most naughty moments along her timeline. On April 23, 1949, Joyce DeWitt, the second oldest of her parents, Paul and Norma's four children, was born. When Joyce was a senior in high school, her love for acting began to take off. She joined the cheerleading team, participated in school plays, and jumped into acting classes. She only wanted to study theater and pursue a career in it. Her father was initially skeptical, but she was able to persuade him, and off she went to college, majoring in theater and earning a master's degree at UCLA. But despite all of her academic success, she eventually found herself working as a legal secretary. She didn't let that deter her, though. She had to navigate the acting industry while keeping one foot in the law field in order to realize her dream of a full-time acting gig. But despite obstacles, Joyce persisted in pushing forward, one audition at a time. On happy days, she even tried her hand at being Fonzie's girlfriend in the late 1970s. However, you know that life can sometimes go in a different route. She was sadly not chosen for the part since they felt she was a little too young and short for it. She felt awful. The disappointment was really difficult for her to get over. But as time passed, ABC gave her the option of two comedy pilots. The only catch is that they only gave her 24 hours to decide. She quickly read through both texts as she raced against time before making her decision. She selected the story, widely known as Three's Company, about a male who lives with two girls. The other show never really took off. So it was a wise move for her to take on the role of Janet Wood, the practical down-to-earth flatmate who wore a football jersey. It seems as if her life was clearing the way for a significant event. And now for a funny story from her time on Three's Company. She has a quirky habit of wearing tights during filming. You do realize that sounds like a personal preference? Actually, it caused some friction with the show's creators. Her preference made her popular with hosiery manufacturers, and in the late 1970s, she was chosen as the face of Legs Pantyhose. But the joy wasn't sustained. In 1979, Joyce missed the Stanley's Hotline episode of Three's Company. Why? The network attempted to take back the rise that had been promised to her. That struck her hard, leaving her with a persistent feeling of grief. She called in ill, not just physically, but also emotionally and spiritually like the world was a little unsteady around her. Joyce met with the network president, a bigwig, and happily they reinstated her raise. The producers, though, appeared to have moved on by the time she was prepared to act once more. They thought they didn't have enough time to prepare, and they already had a rewritten script with a guest performer, Anne Shadeen, taking Joyce's place in the dialogue. She felt abandoned and abandoned in the cold, and that was very tragic. As Three's company came to an end in 1984, Joyce temporarily put her acting career on hold and started a different kind of trip. She made the decision to take a look at life away from the spotlight because it seemed to dim for a moment. She traveled the world in search of uncharted territory before settling in New Mexico. The entire world was now her stage, so she set out to discover it. She took some time to rediscover herself outside of the spotlight before making her comeback to movies and stages in the 1990s. Let's talk about her and Suzanne Somers while we're on the subject of spotlights. It's as if they went three decades without speaking to one other after Suzanne departed the program in 1981, owing to a financial dispute. Consider three decades of stillness, but as the saying goes, time heals all wounds. Finally, in February 2012, they repaired the damage Joyce was invited to be a guest on Suzanne Summers' web series, Suzanne Summers Breaking Through. It's as if the clouds parted and they were able to reconnect. Her life finally began to smooth out until, well, a storm hit in 1995. There was this talk about her doing something unusual, appearing naked for a magazine called High Society. 
They had this image of her as the kind Janet would. And this news came as a surprise. It was a trying time, almost like a cloud looming over her career. However, Joyce DeWitt never appeared naked for high society in 1995. She didn't for any publication. The images that appeared in high society were actually stills from a movie she created in 1976. That was before she became the Janet Wood we all know and love. In the film dubbed Cheerleaders Beach Party, she played a cheerleader who, in a hilarious performance, stripped naked and rushed into the waves. That footage was never shown to the general public. Those photographs, however, made their way onto the pages of the magazine without her permission or even her knowledge. You can bet Joyce was taken aback when she found out. To say I'm outraged is an understatement. It's as if someone entered her personal space without her permission. So she took matters into her own hands and went to court, suing the publisher of High Society for $7.5 million. Her case was solid, including allegations of fraud, duress, and violation of privacy. She even claimed that the images were doctored to make her appear more naked than she was. It wasn't an easy road, but the lawsuit was settled out of court in 1998. Joyce received a monetary award as well as a personal apology from the magazine. It's as if she fought against the tide and triumphed. She expressed satisfaction with the decision, hoping that her lawsuit will pave the way for future celebrities whose photographs were used without their permission. You may be asking why there hasn't been any news regarding her love life. Joyce's love life has had its own hidden corners, with little bustle but a long journey. She used to find her heart throbbing when she was with actor and director Ray Buktanika. They were like this couple who had no need for the whole world to know, and they were together from 1979 to 1986. They didn't marry or have children, but they did share something unique. Later, she met actor Randolph Mantooth, and they were on the verge of being married. It seemed like a promise in the air, but life had other plans, and their narrative ended before the wedding bells could ring. Joyce then appears to have decided to travel life's map on her own. She wasn't in a hurry to find a new spouse, and she proudly displayed her single status. She marched to her own beat, refusing to allow society's standards define her happiness. Joyce also stated that she valued friendships and her work for the greater good over love stories. But there was one incident in 2009 that left a lasting impression. Things took a depressing turn. Joyce was pulled over for drunk driving in El Segundo, California. It's a wake-up call, a moment that calls into question her seemingly peaceful life. Officers from the police department observed some suspicious maneuvers near the park barricades and decided to interfere. She was detained after being subjected to tests to determine her alcohol level. It's as though a rough chapter unfolded. Forward to May 27, 2010, a day that would bear its own significance. Joyce filed a no-contest plea to a misdemeanor charge, a solemn note in her life. She was sentenced to three years on probation, ordered to complete a nine-month alcohol program, and fined $1,510 plus penalties. It was a difficult moment, which added a dimension of sadness to her story. Joyce DeWitt's life has had its share of twists and turns, as well as some less than happy moments, such as the time she became entangled with her business manager, Leonard Carter. Things became a little tangled in 2010. Carter pointed fingers at her, accusing her of not being fair with the contract and failing to give him his fair share, a 10% cut of her earnings. He even claimed she withheld some payments for which he was seeking more than $100,000. DeWitt wasn't going down without a fight. She retaliated by throwing a countersuit at Carter. She revealed that he messed up her money, missed tax reports, and even took out cash without her permission. She wasn't holding back when she accused him of not following the rules. She too desired damages, albeit undefined ones. The drama played out and in 2011, they reached an agreement behind closed doors, shaking hands and agreeing to dismiss their accusations. But the specifics of that agreement remained secret. It was a private transaction. Fans stuck by her through the ups and downs. They recall her particularly for her time in Three's company. When they meet her, they have this amazing connection with her, hugging her and even crying. 
And while DeWitt's hair has grayed, she is still working as an actress, albeit in a calmer theater setting rather than the big screen. It's as if she's created her own area away from the glare of the spotlight while still doing her thing. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click now, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one. See you on the next one.